Hi, Alex Hayes here from REA Group. I'm here to talk about Atomic, this server-driven UI framework that we've been building that we say is powered by atoms. In Brad Frost's Atomic Design, an atom is a UI element that can't be broken down any further without ceasing to be functional. You can think of atoms as labels, text inputs, or just plain old text on a screen. In Atomic, we borrow this concept and use it in combination with our design system, ConstructKit, to create a declarative, composable backend API that can be rendered on iOS and Android natively. I'm here to give a demo of how this works and to show what the developer experience is like using Atomic. So you can see over here on the left, I have my editor. This is a TypeScript file and I have an iOS and an Android client here. There's an accompanying blog post that talks about uh, Atomic and introduces Atomic and the concepts that around server-driven UI. And in it, there's a fictional company called Awesome Company. Um, awesome Company is some kind of peer-to-peer -peer app. We don't know much about it. It's fictional. And their users have been asking for this new feature, a marketplace that allows them to buy and sell items off each other. Now, don't worry. REA Group is not about to move into this space and create a marketplace for users to buy and sell items off each other. This is just a fictional um, concept that we're using to illustrate some of the functionality of Atomic. So here we've got something that looks similar to a marketplace. We've got a bunch of items that are for sale. You can press on an item and you can see some more details about it, such as, you know, who's selling it, uh, the description of it, you know, how much it is, things like that. And so what we're going to do is, I'm just going to press on these shoes here. Now, these are not real shoes. I generated the image with Midjourney. This is not a real person. That's not a real face. Uh, and that's not a real name. Although I'm sure there is a Justin Black somewhere in the world. Okay. So um, over here in my editor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change some of the code that is used to render this screen. So I'm going to place, uh, I'm going to change the items for this Y stack. And we'll talk about this in more detail in a moment. I'm just going to add a construct kit text here. And I'm going to say this construct kit text, the content for this construct kit text is hello world. And I'm going to hit save on my editor. And what that's going to do is it's going to hot reload both of those clients. Now, this is not a web view. This is not HTML. It's native iOS and native Android. Okay. Now, what's construct kit text, this thing here? So as I mentioned before, REA Group's design system is called ConstructKit. And ConstructKit text is our way of ensuring that wherever we put text on screen, it adheres to our design system. And so, for instance, if you want to change how the text looks, you have a bunch of different variants you can use um, that form part of our design system. So I've got things like display, title, caption, all these kind of things. And so if we use title 01 instead of display, uh, it looks like that. I'm just going to go back to display here, press save. Um, okay, let's add some color. Okay, so let's say that we're going to use the color here, text brand, and we should say the color, it uh, should see the color change to red there. Okay, so here we're introducing an important concept that we use in Atomic, and we borrowed this from ConstructKit, where we have these things that we call tokens. Tokens are a way of saying that, hey, this this thing, this color here should be text brand, but the server doesn't know what actual color text brand is. We leave that up to the clients. And this is really important because then if we do that, then clients can theme themselves. And so when you configure an instance of Atomic within a host, you can define the theme. And that way, when the user switches from light to dark mode, we don't need to make a round trip back to the server. Uh, as we'll see soon, um, you can build really dynamic applications with Atomic that don't require round trips back to the server. And so this is an important concept. Um, okay, so let's introduce another concept that we have in Atomic. So Atomic implements a essentially a, a superset of our design system, ConstructKit. ConstructKit doesn't have a Y stack or a scroller. Uh, and it also doesn't have this concept of modifiers. Modifiers provide 
uh, atomic, the um, ability to implement or implement a subset of the web's box model. And so if you're not f familiar with the box model, it's a way of defining, you know, for instance, various properties on a particular a, a, on a particular element. Now we implement this natively in iOS and Android. It's not, again, it's not HTML, it's not CSS. And so what we can do is we can control, say, the dimension, the margin, the padding, the corner radius, things like that. I'm going to give this particular um, element here, this con con uh, construct kit text, uh, a background brand static color. And I'm also going to give, I'm also going to change the color of the text here to text inverted static. I'm going to hit save and we'll see now that this particular thing will now look more like a box, a red box with some white text in it. If I change to dark mode, we'll see that the, the colors there don't change. So these static colors don't change. And so, for instance, if you were a flatmate, uh, Flatmates, another branded REA group, um, your, um, your text inverted static and background brand static might be different colors than, say, for instance, realestate.com.au's colors. Um, and that's configured when you configure an instance of Atomic in the clients. Okay, let's now give this thing some dimension. I'm going to say full width, um, and that's going to pull that uh, box all the way across the screen. And now let's give that box uh, some margin. Let's pull it off the edges. Um, and so we can control margin on a whole bunch of different in a whole bunch of different places. Uh, we're going to say left, right here, and we're going to say we want large margin. Again, this is a token that ConstructKit defines, and when you configure an instance of Atomic, you can change what large is. You know, so a large margin margin in iOS might be different to a large margin on an iPad, for example, or a large margin for realestate.com.au might be different to a large margin for flatmates. Okay, let's uh, define some padding. If you're not familiar with the box model, padding happens inside the box, or at least it does in our subset of um, uh, this here. And again, we can define this in various places. I'm going to say some top bottom padding and do that here. And you'll see that the box gets bigger. And let's also do some corner radius, corner radius. Uh, we can de define uh, the corner radius on all the corners if we want, or various particular corners. I'm just going to give this a large corner radius. So it's nice and rounded. Um, and then let's introduce this other, other concept here. So visibility. You can make things visible or you can hide them. Sounds really simple, but it's surprising how, um, how much use you can make out of this simple um, behavior if you can control it within the client. And so I'm going to give a demo of that now. If we go up here, I'm going to add some con a constructed button. Uh, and I'm going to in introduce another new concept here. I'll just give this a label of press me. Okay, so any um, any element in Atomic or any component in Atomic can have, as well as having modifiers, can have actions. An action is a combination of a trigger. And so in this case here, we're going to use, uh, sorry, an on press trigger and effects. And so in Atomic, an action is a combination of triggers and effects. And effects are things that are defined on the server, but executed in the client. So in this case here, I'm going to do a toggle visibility effect. And I'm going to go uh, target ID for the thing that we want to toggle the visibility on is foo. And I'm going to give this thing down here an ID of foo. I'm going to hit save and we should see this construct kit button appears. And now if I press the button, it will toggle the visibility uh, of that particular element. And this is not making a round trip back to the server. Again, I'll say it again. So actions in Atomic are defined on the server and the triggers and effects are executed on the client. So in this case, it's an on press trigger. We have a bunch of different triggers. We have things like on appear. So when content appears, you can execute effects or things like on-field value, uh, when someone enters um, uh, and types into a text box, we have things like on-wake, on-sleep, stuff like that. And we have a bunch of different effects as well. So we have you know, the ability to toggle uh, visibility. We can also set the visibility explicitly to hidden or visible. 
Uh, but we also have many other things like inserting content or um, loading content from a server. What is really surprising is how few triggers and how few effects you need to make a really dynamic UI. So I'm going to give another example here of an, another effect that we have, the insert item effect. I'm going to insert an item into this target ID and we're going to say foo bar. So we'll say bar. And the content that we're going to insert is construct kit text. Um, and we're going to say the, the content for the text is just button pressed. Um, and we're going to insert this at the end of this particular list. Now, the list that we're going to insert it into is this Y stack here. So I'm going to give this an ID of bar. And so when I press the button now, it's going to execute two effects. It's going to, in, it's going to toggle the visibility on this item here, but it's also going to insert this content into this Y stacks items. Yeah, so I press the button here, button pressed, button pressed. And if we do the same over here in Android, we can see that it does the same. Okay, so let's introduce another concept now. So in the blog post, I talk about how we implement a subset of the, the box model, but also a subset of Flexbox. So let's just add an X stack here. An X stack lays out its items horizontally. The Y stack here lays out its items vertically. And so we're just going to create, um, let's add a square here. I'm going to add, say, however many squares that is. And earlier I talked about how we have this declarative composable uh, backend API. We're just going to create a function here called square. It's going to return that type. And in this thing here, we're just going to return a shape. Um, we'll import that. And on this shape, we're going to give it some modifiers and we'll say dimension uh, is um, width value of 30 and a height value of 30 as well because it's a square. And we'll give it a background color as well. Um, let's use background uh, pink and we'll press save. And then we should have a bunch of uh, squares across the top here. They just look like a sol solid color at the moment. Let's, let's make that a bit uh, graphic pink. Um, it just looks like a solid color at the moment. Let's um, put some inter item item spacing in between the items here. So let's say that we want medium spacing. Again, this is a token that comes from ConstructKit and it's controllable when you configure an instance of Atomic. That's a bit, that's a bit much, let's make it small. Um, and now what we're going to see is how we implement just a subset of Flexbox. Okay, so to see that, let's add some modifiers here. And we're going to give this thing a background color. Let's say background teal. Um, and let's give this also, we'll just save that. And let's give this also a dimension. Uh, let's go say dimension full width um, to pull this thing all the way across the screen. <clears throat> And let's also give it a height of 200 so we can lay out these items within, within that box. Okay, so um, we've got our inter item spacing token here, which defines the spacing between these items. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set the main axis alignment and we'll set it to start and that will pull the items across to the start of this box. Uh, we can also pull them across the end if we want. And by default, it puts them in the middle. Uh, we can also um, control the cross axis alignment. Uh, so I'll just set this to center, which is the default. We can also control the cross axis alignment and the cross axis alignment puts the, aligns the items on the cross axis for this particular component. In this case, we're using an X stack, which the main axis is horizontal and the cross axis is vertically. Uh, vertical. And so we can align these items up the top. By default, it puts them in the middle, um, or we can align them at the end. And it's surprising how far you can get with just this um, simple, I mean, it, it sounds simple, that it's somewhat difficult to implement it natively in the clients, but um, surprising how far you can get with uh, just this simple, um, you know, subset of Flexbox when you're building out UIs. Okay, 
let's undo all this and let's go back to um, what we had when I first showed you the screen, back to our marketplace and show a couple of more things. Okay, let's talk about um, this smoke and mirrors effect that we quite often do in native mobile development. So quite often what you'll see in native mobile development, you'll be on a screen like this and you'll press on a particular item and you'll go to that item and it looks like all the contents already loaded. Yeah. Now, if you pay close attention, you might see things down the bottom that aren't loaded and they get loaded up when this screen shows. Now, this is somewhat difficult to do in native mobile development, but it, it means that users have this really great experience. So we quite often go to, and, and do those kind of things. But when we were building Atomic, we knew that we wanted to make this really simple because it's something that we want to do all the time, not just on our most important screens, but on all our screens so that users have a, a really great experience across the entire application. And so in Atomic, we have this really simple mechanism, again, using the action triggers and effects. And let's just have a look at this down here. So here we have an action, uh, which is an on appear uh, trigger. And so when this particular Y stack here appears, this action is going to be executed and the effects in this action will be executed on the client. And what we have is a load effect here. A load effect takes a URL and it fetches content from that URL and then it finds a particular target as defined by here and replaces that target on the screen. And so the effect uh, works like this. Up here, the items, if below the fold is false, which it is by default, um, we just return the product hero and the seller banner. These thing, this thing here and this thing here. Um, if below the fold is true, we return these items plus the description. Now, if this was a real application, we'd probably have many more items in here that are returned below the fold, such as we might have other similar items or we might have um, uh, advertising or things like that below there. Um, in this case, this is not a real application. We just have a description here. Um, but essentially this shows how simple it is to implement this, this uh, functionality in Atomic. Okay, so I'm going to finish up there. Thanks very much for watching. We've been talking about Atomic, the server-driven UI framework that REA Group is using in production. Um, we also have a web client that is early stages, uh, but both iOS and Android are in production for flatmates and will be soon also on realestate.com.au for some of our screens. Thanks very much for watching.